Hi, I'm Gareth and in this video we're going to have a little bit of a think about how to make piano accompaniments work effectively. Now quite often you might be in this sort of situation where you've got a melodic line, maybe it's some kind of lead sheet, um, whether it's a vocal line or an instrumental line doesn't really matter, maybe you've got some chords if it's a lead sheet, maybe you've got to work out the chords for yourself if you've just got a line. But either see this as a lead sheet or see it as a melody where you've had a little think about well which chords might fit with the notes. And what a lot of people find they're doing when they're kind of doing this stuff in this way is that they can find the chords but it just sounds a bit kind of ineffective. So for example you might end up with a situation that goes a bit like this if I play this with these chords where you just got to put the triads down in the left hand which is the biggest temptation really just to think okay I need a B flat chord, there's a B flat chord, I need an E flat chord, there's an E flat chord and you kind of clonk these triads down. Well how would it sound if we did that with these chords? Does it sound bad? Well not particularly because the chords fit and it sort of all harmonizes nicely with the melody but from the point of view of a piano part it's not terribly exciting for various reasons. When we do this stuff the temptation is always to think great I've got a melody in the right hand and I'm going to put chords in the left hand. It's often how people work on a keyboard because if you've got chords that have got sort of automatic um, things within the keyboard that would make it kind of sound a bit more fancy so you just have to put the chords down well it's one way in which people work you know just putting down a chord. Sometimes people even have a single finger chord system where you just put down a note and it will play you a major chord or if you put down another note with it it will make it minor all that stuff. So I'm really sort of thinking about well if we're free of all those sort of aids how would we do this? Well the first thing is we wouldn't think this way. We wouldn't think here's a melody in the right hand and here's a load of notes in the left hand that are just banging out the chords for various reasons. First of all the lower you get the less clear is the sound of the chord. All right so if I take this B flat chord up here it's crystal clear. Bring it down an octave it's still pretty clear. Bring it down an octave it's still reasonable, bring it down another octave. Actually what is that? It's a kind of really deep muddy congested sound. So you see that the further up we go the brighter and the clearer the sound becomes, the further down we go the less clear it becomes and it becomes this rather dark muddy sound. Especially when we get notes that are close together and this is the danger of doing triads. You know if I've got triads down here If I listen carefully I can kind of make out those chords but the notes are very close together, I'm low on the keyboard. Also the melody tends to sound rather sort of dislocated. You know if I'm playing a chord down here and then I've got something going up here, there's a huge hole in the middle of the piano where there's no sound happening. Now really the best way to deal with this is to reverse the thinking of melody in the right hand chord in the left hand because instead of thinking 1 plus 3 start thinking 3 plus 1. So in other words if you can get a bass line into the left hand but you can put the notes of the chords into the right hand it will instantly transform. So if I try doing something similar again so I'm going to use the same chords but this time I'm thinking I'll get the melody at the top but I'll get three notes in the right hand and just play the bass in the left hand. Can you hear that this is going to sound much clearer and also I don't have that sense of this huge void in the middle between the top and the chords. You can see I just varied that for a moment. You know there's one moment where I did slip more notes into the left hand. That sort of works all right if the left hand's high enough but for most of that I was thinking three in the right, one in the left. Suddenly you get rid of all that grumpiness and all that dark congested sound in the bass. 
So three plus one rather than one plus three would be my first big tip. That takes a little bit of organizing. It's much easier to clonk a chord in the left hand than just play the tune. But if you can kind of get the chord into the right hand sitting under the tune, that's great. The next thing is to think, well, do I just want to clonk the chords down or do I want to try and get some figuration going? And now what do I mean by that? Well, it depends what the style is. I mean, I could do something like this, couldn't I, with my B flat chord. E flat, C minor, F. So I have a sort of bass part that's going um chink chink, you know, it's a bit more waltzy, isn't it? Now in that case, I'm still doing my melody in the right hand and I'm doing my chords in the left hand, but by putting a bass note on the beat and then coming up much higher to put the chord in, I'm putting the chord in the middle of the texture rather than at the bottom. And that's much easier to get away with playing the chords in the left hand then because it's higher up, it's clearer, and it's filling this space that we previously had between the top and the bottom. So, you know, the idea that you might just get a little piece of figuration, as we call it, a little idea, you know, bass note, chink, chink, bass note, chink, chink, and these chinks are just spelling out the chords would be one way of doing it. Another way of doing it would be to say, well, can I have a sort of more flowing rhythm in the left hand? So we're in 6-8 time. How about if I could arpeggiate my chords in some way, maybe by using some semiquavers or 16th notes. So I do something like this. Now, suddenly, we've got something that's going to sound much more expressive, much more musical. And in that case, it's working better with the 6-8. The um chink chink thing was fine, but it could sound a bit more like a sort of waltzy thing in 3-4, where it'd be more effective. But it does work in 6-8, depending on what style you're wanting. But you can hear there, there's a bit more flow going on by just rolling these semiquavers or 16th notes by going up the arpeggio, just thinking, okay, it's a B flat major chord. How can I arpeggiate that? And then an E flat. And then a C minor. And so on. And actually you think, oh, actually that sounds quite nice. And it sounds a bit more like an independent accompaniment. It's not really tracking what the line is doing, what the melody is doing. It's doing something a little bit different, giving us a bit of contrast, supporting that line. It's not doing anything particularly melodic. It's spelling out notes of the harmony. So you can get the accompaniment sounding much better just by doing a little bit of this figuration, if you like. So it's kind of partly experimenting with all of this. If you're free to choose the chords, well, you could think, well, maybe one thing I need to do is spruce up the chords a little bit. You know, so I've got this B flat start, and then E flat. Well, I could do something clever here, like use a G7 chord that pushes me onto the C minor chord that follows on, and it just gives me a bit of color, so I could do that. Another thing is to say, well, if someone is going to sing this melody or play this melody on an instrument, do I really want to double it? Well, my experience of this kind of stuff is if you're working with a singer who's not very confident, they often need you to double it or they lose their way. Actually, if they're confident about what they're doing, what's the point in following their line? You can just concentrate on the chords, let them deliver the line and you concentrate on the chords. Certainly that's true for an instrumentalist as well. So they can just play the line and you can think, I'll just play the chords and think of some figuration. something like that. You don't need to follow their line. Then their line is going to come out with a real prominence without you doubling it. And just think about this. If you double their line, well, what's the point of two people playing the same part? 
You don't really want that. It may not be exactly together for one thing. It may not be exactly in tune. If someone's singing or playing slightly out of tune and you're playing exactly their note but in tune because the piano's in tune, or of course the piano might be out of tune and they're in tune. So this issue about sort of being exactly together in the ensemble and being exactly in tune with each other. Actually, if there are any little vulnerabilities in that, you're better to be playing something that's independent of the line. So we don't kind of draw attention to those things. But it just gives the melodic line a real focus and it actually frees you up because if you're thinking I've got to play this melody and I've got to get some chords in underneath this melody it can become a little bit of a tricky order but if you're free just to think you know what I'm just going to do my thing with the chords and accompany them doing their thing actually musically it's likely to be much more effective. So you might want to work with this example, you know, just sort of learn to sing that melody or learn to play that melody and then learn to play those chords and then experiment and think, how many different things can I do with those chords? And you'll find yourself just kind of becoming more creative and freeing yourself up in the way that you deliver a piano accompaniment. And that will be a, a great liberation for you. Obviously, You've got to take into account the style of the music in which you're working. You know, you might be doing something totally different with that in a different style, but the same principles apply to it. So I hope that just helps give one or two top tips on how to make your piano accompaniments more effective.